Okay, so in college algebra, we're ready for section 1.9, and 1.9 deals with inverse functions. So we're finding the inverse. And this is also a review from Algebra 2, so you talked about it then. Informally, uh, the definition of an inverse function is a function that un, that un, uh, wraps or has the effect of undoing the other function. And the notation for that, like if we have f of x is our original function, let's say it's uh, representing you take every x value times 4, then the inverse of it, which is f inverse like this, so when you see that negative 1 exponent, means you do the opposite. So instead of multiplying the values by 4, you would divide them by 4. Okay? So informally, that's what it looks like. You just do the opposite operation. Now, this notation up here, it's important to understand that when you see that negative 1, um, it looks like it might mean, you know, normally when we see like an x and an x to the negative 1, the x to the negative 1 means you make the x positive by bringing it down to the denominator. In this case, however, that's not what it means. It is not, so it is not equal to 1 over f of x. In the function notation, this negative 1 represents inverse, not reciprocal. So it's very important to remember that. Okay, let's say that um, another example of an inverse, let's just take something, a set of points. Let's say that we have f of x is maybe the set of points uh, 1, 4, and maybe 2, 5. Okay, not 2.5, 2, 5, there we go, and 3, 6. So my operation here, for every input, I'm adding 3 to it to get the output. So the inverse of that function would be where I would interchange the x and y values. So 4, 1, 5, 2. And notice in this one then, I am subtracting 3 from each of the domains. Okay? So there is another example, a very simple one, of an inverse function. Or those two functions would be inverses of each other. Okay? So let's try algebraically how to find an inverse function. So let's say that I am given the function f of x is equal to uh, 2x minus 3. Okay, so keep in mind then, what we're doing with every input we're given, every x value, first we're doubling it, then we are subtracting 3. Okay, so because you just interchange the x and the y values, the f of x represents a y. Remember, f of x is y, so we're looking at, if we were to graph it, the value of the function is the y value. So we're going to interchange the x and the y. So I'm going to put the x over here. I'm going to put the 2 times y minus 3. And then we are going to solve this equation for y. So I'm going to add 3 and then divide by 2. And then the last step is replace the y with the inverse function notation. And that inverse function notation is this. So this is equal to then x plus 3 divided by 2. Okay, so now let's verify that these two are inverses. Well, if we verify it informally from the first function, once again, we said we take whatever the input is, we double it, we subtract 3. So the inverse then is taking a value, adding 3, and dividing by 2. So you see how those two undo each other? 
Another way you can verify that they're inverse functions is, is by doing the composition. So you can either do F composition F inverse we just talked about composition in our last section. So this notation means you take the second one, this one, remember we read it left, uh, right to left. So we take this value, this expression, and we plug it in to the x in this one. Okay, so we get 2 times the quantity x plus 3 over 2, and then we subtract 3, okay? So it's just taking out this x value and replacing it with the x plus 3 divided by 2. All right, so if I simplify this, this will reduce. x plus 3 minus 3, we see the 3's cancel out, and we're back to x. So that is... Um, algebraic verification that those two functions are inverses of each other. Okay. Another example of an inverse then, let's say we have the function f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 3. Okay. So let's find the inverse of this function algebraically. So we replace the x and the y's, we interchange them, so the x comes over here, the y goes underneath the radical sign, and then we solve it for the y, so we'll move the 3 over first of all, we need to get rid of that radical, so the opposite of a square root is squaring, so now we are squaring both sides. Now that we have the y isolated, our last step is to interchange that y with the inverse notation, so f inverse of x is equal to x minus 3 quantity squared. Okay, so informally, let's take a look to see if these two are inverses. So in the first function, we took the square root First of all, whatever your input is, we find the square root of that value, and then after that, we add 3. Okay, so to undo it, we would, if we go down here, we travel down here, to undo it, we would do um, the reverse order and the opposite operation. So the last thing we did is add 3, so the first thing we would do for the inverse is subtract 3, and then the opposite of taking the square root is to square it. Okay, so take a look at our inverse function, and sure enough, the first thing we did was subtract 3 and then square it. So those are inverse functions of each other. Okay, and algebraically, to prove it, this time let's find this composition, f inverse composition f of x. Okay, so that means we take this expression and we substitute it in for the x value in the first one. Okay, so the f inverse function was we take the x, subtract 3, and square it. Well, I'm going to take out the x and I'm going to replace it with the square root of x plus 3. And then we see algebraically, a positive 3 and a negative 3 um, reduces down to a 0. The square root of x squared is x. So yes, indeed, we have unraveled it. We have undone it, so we're back to the original input value. Now, if we look at graphs, um, what happens when you do the inverse of graphs? All right, let's take f of x is equal to uh, 2x minus 3. Okay, so on a table of values, let's just find a few 
points on that graph. So let's go with um, 0. If we plug in a 0, we get negative 3. If we plug in a 1, we get negative 1. And if we plug in a 2, we get 1. Okay, so let's graph those. So we've got the point 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, one and 2, 1. Okay, so that's our original function. That's in red. And I just plotted a few points, but it's actually the line with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. Uh, let's see if I can draw. Sorry, that's not the best line through those points. Okay, so now the inverse function. All right, well, let's do it algebraically. Interchange the x and the y. So x is equal to 2y minus 3. We're going to add 3. Divide by 2. Okay. And if we simplified this out, we'll actually use, we'll get real technical here. We'll use the notation. And then I'll put this in slope-intercept form. So it's 1 half x plus 3 halves. All right, let's do a table of values for the inverse function. Okay, so let's say um, that the y is a ne uh, that the x, I'm sorry, is a negative three. So if I plug in negative three, half of negative three is negative three halves. Negative three halves plus three halves is zero. Okay, how about if I plug in a negative one? 1 half times negative 1 is negative half. Negative half plus 3 halves is 1. Okay, let's take 1. Half of 1 is a half. A half plus 3 halves is 4 halves or 2. Okay, now take a look at the two tables. Compare this table to this table. Well, notice I picked... The, um, for the inputs here, I picked what the outputs were over here. So if the point 0, negative 3 is on the original function, then the point negative 3, 0 is on this function. All right, so let's graph those. And I'll get my blue pen. So we need negative 3, 0. We need negative 1, 1. And we need 1, two. Okay, so this line then has a slope of one half and it also has a y-intercept of three halves, so one and a half. So slope one half up one over two and it's crossing, well my graph's not really exact because I didn't have a grid, but it's crossing um, at three halves at one and a half. Okay, so you're interchanging the x and the y values. Well, what happens when you interchange the x and the y values then is that your functions end up being reflections in the line x is equal to y. So here's the line x is equal to y. And because we're just interchanging the x and the y values, they are symmetrical. Your inverse functions are symmetrical to that line. So they have symmetry to the line y is equal to x, okay? So inverse functions. So graphically, you can look to see if they're inverse functions also, okay? But in order for a function to have an inverse, um, you have to, that it has to be a one-to-one -one function, and a one-to-one -one 
one-to-one -one functions means that um, for every x you have one y and also for every y you have one x. So the original function has to be um, a one-to-one -one function in order for it to have an inverse, okay? Because it, um, it also has to, when you do the inverse of it, that function also has to be a function. Well, the inverse function has to be a function. So for example, um, a parabola, let's just take y is equal to x squared. Okay, and so we know the graph looks something like this. Oh, but it actually hits at 0, 0, and 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. Well, you see this passes the vertical line test, but it is not um, a one-to-one -one function because it does not pass a horizontal line test, okay, because it crosses twice on a horizontal line. And if you interchanged all those points, you would end up with this function here you'd have a parabola that's laying on its side. Well, I called it a function. But actually, this is not a function because this one does not pass the horizontal line test. Okay? So the only way for a parabola, like f of x is equal to x squared, the only way for that to have an inverse is if you restrict the domain. And let's say we only look at the right half of it or the left half of it. So if we say we're only looking at the parabola where it's greater than or equal to zero, so we're looking at this piece of the graph. Now the inverse of it, when you interchange it, you get the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. And when you take the square root of it, the graph looks like this. So those are inverses of each other. And if you look at your original graph here, if you just look at the blue curve, you see that it not only passes vertical line tests, but it also passes horizontal line test. So that is a one-to-one -one function. So in a parabola, you have to restrict the domain. Otherwise, um, you're not going to be able to say it has an inverse. Okay? So um, good luck on, on working on some of those. It's actually a pretty simple concept, and I, I think you'll catch on quite, um, quite quickly. All right. Good job.